Will they be able to come together next? And good evening. We are glad you can join us for this special playoff edition of Extra Point. I'm Jerry O'Lennon. And I'm Bonnie Bellino. We'll start off with the Division I of the Northern Section. And let's go ahead and we're going to talk about Red Bluff. They fell to Foothill last week in the last regular season game. But this is the first game of the playoffs where you leave nothing out. Let's see just who brought their best game. Foothill quarterback Ryan Pollard finds Davis Capon, watch the ball, bounce pass to himself, Woo! he keeps it, and uh, that's for the first down. Cougars Polly goes again, nice and easy, deep to Capon for the touchdown. Foothill is up 21-0 on that one. Rudd Bluff is driving, Garrett Sandow is the quarterback. He's going to find his receiver for the first down, and he'll go out about, about the 33rd-yard line. And Sandow again to Mitch Fox. Helping to bridge that Spartan gap. 21-7 Foothill after that one. Cougars again, and it's Pollard again finding Capon with the shifty moves. And he's down at about the five-yard line after this play. And Pollard goes for one of his four touchdown passes tonight. And this time it's to Grant Smith putting Foothill 40-7 to over Red Bluff. It's another impressive night for Davis Capon. He had three touchdowns on the night. Foothill wins 48 to 13. They'll play second seeded Paradise, which had a bye in the Division I semifinals. Shasta and Chico in tonight's other Division I game. Shasta and Chico. Sounds familiar. Sure, a week ago, Chico walloped Shasta by 36 points in the regular season finale. How about tonight, when the game mattered even more? What do that's Chico there in the red. We go to Asgard Yard, where Chico was looking for a repeat performance of last week's dominating win over the Wolves. Picking it up in the second. Wolves on the move, trailing 21-14. And an Alexander Parents pass is picked off by Andrew Morgan Hernandez. He comes up with a big return to set up the Panthers with a great field position. Then Daniel Robbins airs it out to Barack Curridekelly, making the great catch in the end zone. And Chico takes a 28-14 lead. Third quarter, Shasta trying to answer. Jake Calloway breaks off the big one, breaking tackles along the way, taking it 38 yards. The drive was capped off by Avery Holly. He goes 30, powering his way through defenders all the way to the end zone to make it a closer game now. 28-22, Chico still leading, but Chico had Trevon Reed, who finds a hole and slips through the defense for the 10-yard touchdown run. Chico wins a barn burner, 57-42. They will play at number one seeded Enterprise next week in the Division I semis. And we have only just begun. We move forward with Division II highlights from both the valleys as Central and West both play home playoff games. More highlights are coming up. It is the first round of Division II. Live Oak, just north of Yuba City, is the number seven seed, and Central Valley is at the number two spot. Let's take a look at these highlights. Live Oak in the purple and gold, CV in the blue and white. Live Oak comes on strong in the first half, putting the first points on the board right there. And the PAT is good. They will be up seven points. And then CV's defense is really going to keep them in the game. you got to catch this play. That was me holding the camera, so luckily I uh, missed that. And the Falcons are driving. Junior Rossi love it with the breakaway for the first down. Cody Connor powers through the CV for the offense, and that's going to set them up for the Falcon TD. And CV's defense really sets up their offense, where Silvera ran for 100-plus yards and two touchdowns. Penta had six carries and 125 yards, one TD. QB Naylor threw for two touchdowns. Central Valley will play West Valley or Lassen in the semifinals. Jerry, you have the winner of that one. Well, yeah, that's what's intriguing, Bonnie. If West Valley could win tonight, they would play... Central Valley, who we just saw in the next round in sort of a, I don't know, Valley Bowl Part 2. West Valley, though, had to beat Lassen. 
West Valley in the black. Look at the rough and tough defense as they corral the Lassen runner and take him down hard. Lassen only the sixth seed, aiming for an upset. And a nice aim here, a touchdown pass to Frank Shepard. This was a tight game all the way. West Valley's offense in good hands with sophomore Brady Kincaid, who brushes off a tackle or two and reaches the 10-yard line. A few ticks later, Kincaid finishes it off. Check out the score, 21-20. West Valley staves off the upset and will meet Central Valley next Friday in the Division II semis. West Valley hangs on and wins 21-20. Now the other half of the Division II bracket, top-seeded Sutter tops Wairika 49-7. They'll go to the semis and play Orland a 33-0 shutout winner over Wheatland. Some good stuff there. Division 3 highlights are next, and we're going to show you some extra peps in our extra points, so don't go away. In Division 3, second-seeded Trinity host, seventh-seeded Hamilton. The Braves looking to take control of this one from the very beginning. We'll go to Hamilton High. First quarter, Braves with the ball. And Brad Hall is going to escape the pressure on this one. He's going to hit Andrew Shevelhout on the screen pay at pass. He races up the sideline untouched, 55 yards to the touchdown. And just like that, Hamilton leads 7 to nothing. Trinity putting together a drive of their own. Corey Cook plowing through the defenders. He picks up 18 yards. And Wolves facing the fourth down. Ryan Higgins finds Nick Moreno in the back of the end zone. Moreno with the th great catch, 8-7 Trinity. But the Braves are answering right back. Shippelhart again, this time on the run. He would not be caught picking up 60 yards in all as Hamilton takes the lead back at 13-8. and eight. Next Brave possession. Who else? It's Shippelhart again. One more time with this carry. This time he goes for 40 yards for another Braves touchdown. So Hamilton's win sets the stage for them to play Modoc, which beat Calusa 48-22. to And the other half of the bracket, top-seeded Pierce beat Durham 37-22, and Willows beat East Nicholas 41-14. Well, West Valley High School football is one of the better teams in their division, and their cheerleaders are also among the elite. As KRCR News Channel 7's Tracy Leong found out in this week's Extra Pep, the West Valley cheerleaders work continuously throughout the year to perform at their high level. The Eagles cheerleaders are reaching new heights. We start facing forward. Coach Mindy O'Dell says in her eight years coaching, she's never had a squad quite as talented. One, two, three, four. A reflection of their year-round commitment to the sport. It takes a lot of training and conditioning to be able to do the stunts safely um, that we are able to do. So to get that high level of degree of difficulty, you have to do a lot of training. And her eaglets agree. We like to have cool things for them to see and be like, wow, look what she just did. Mm -hmm. I think that's why we practice so hard to be as good as we are. Especially since they believe their coach is responsible for helping them soar above the rest. She's one of the most important role models as an adult that I have because she is so dedicated to us and I think that's so important that we have such a good coach that cares so much about us. Some consider Eagles to be spiritual messengers, and these cheerleaders have a message for their players. WVHS! If we're out there cheering and we're pumping up our crowd and they're like, our whole community is out here supporting us, I think it makes them feel better, and they're like, yeah, we need to win this game, and they put more effort. We, no matter if we are losing or winning, um, our girls cheer to the very end. Cheering on with the West Valley cheerleaders, Tracy Leong, KRCR News Channel 7. All right, thank you, Tracy. Well, we're not done. Redding Christian tries to reach the final in eight-man football. We'll see if the Lions roared to yet another victory or if when the horn sounded, they came up short. More extra point when we come back. Division 6, that would be your eight-man football. Reading Christian in the semis against Butte Valley. BV and White setting up to punt high snap. Swarm, swarm! 
Right, and Christian creates the two-point safety, and it was 9-0. Hayne Piper, he smells the end zone. Up the shoot, Redding Christian was ahead 17-0 after one quarter. More to come in the second quarter. Piper steps back, gets rushed, flushed out, lofts a pass to number 18. That would be David Dinius, and it was 24-0. Look who's at quarterback right now. Why, it's, uh, it's Dinius who follows his blocker on his way to the end zone. Redding Christian was dominating up. 33 nothing at halftime. Their 45 to 9 win propels the Lions to 12 and 0 and into the Section 6 title game. They'll play the winner of tomorrow's game between Loyalton and the favorite and second seeded Dunsmuir. We have one more set of scores to show you. It's the Division 4 playoffs. Here's how they turned out. Maxwell upended Bernie and will play second seeded Portolo next week. And in the snow, Fall River hosted and topped Quincy and they'll play top seeded Chester next week. Regular seasons end tomorrow for the area's JC teams. Butte College is at San Francisco City College. A win puts them at 9-1 and and gives them a share of the NorCal Conference title. And Shasta competes their season tomorrow. They finish it against the College of the Redwood. Kickoff at Memorial Stadium is at 5 o'clock. At 4.30, there will be a special ceremony for Tyler Burton, the Shasta player who is in a medically induced coma after being punched nearly two weeks ago. And tomorrow, KRCR News Channel 7 will bring you these games at 9 in the morning. You'll see Louisville at Syracuse, and at 12.30, it's Penn State at Nebraska. News Channel 7 is at uh, 4.30, followed by Notre Dame and Boston College at 5 o'clock. That wraps up Extra Point for this Friday night. Thank you for watching. Thanks. We'll see you next week. And on behalf of everyone...